H.264 or H.265? Which codec should you use for rendering your videos for YouTube? To answer this question, in today's video, we are going to look at the difference in render times and we're also going to look at the actual visual quality of the final product on YouTube when rendered either in H.264 or H.265. Now, the outcome of this analysis might actually surprise you quite a bit because even though H.265 or HEVC is definitely the superior codec that produces the same visual quality with a smaller file size, this doesn't always translate into the best possible quality on YouTube because this highly depends on the resolution that you're rendering in. Now, before diving right into the results for today's video, I want to mention that all of the tests I have performed using DaVinci Resolve, the free version, as since version 17 something something, um, DaVinci Resolve supports rendering using H.265. Moreover, the footage I'm using for these tests comes from Modern Warfare Warzone 2, so I've used gaming footage at 60 FPS. However, the results that I'm showing in this video should hopefully also be applicable for other type of footage, such as talking hats, GoPro or drone footage. And with having said that, let's start with our render times. Now, generally speaking, you would expect the render times to actually decrease when going from H.264 to H.265. Now, while this is generally true for most people, it also sort of depends on the type of hardware that you're using to render your videos. You see, when you render using H.264, you will use 100% of your CPU or rather all of your threads that you have available to render that video. That also translates into extremely high temperatures when, for instance, you have a 3900K. On the other hand, if you render using H.265, then most of this work is actually done on the GPU and therefore your CPU isn't really doing too much. But then again, if you have a beastly CPU like the 3900K with 32 threads, then going from that to rendering on your GPU isn't actually going to provide you with much of an improvement in render speeds. So for my system, you can see the render times that I'm getting for a sample one minute clip without any edits or any overlays or any effects on this graph right now. Now, for this video, I'm going to be using these three different resolutions that you see here, 1080p, 1440p and 2160p or 4K. The orange bars on this plot show the render times for a one minute sample clip of each of these resolutions in H.264, whereas the blue bars represent the same clip but rendered at H.265. As you can see in this very idealized case, I actually do get improvement in render speeds when moving from H.264 to H.265. However, as I mentioned before, this is a very idealized case as there are no cuts, no overlays, no text, no effects applied to the clips whatsoever. And therefore, I also like to talk about um, what I'm seeing when actually rendering a proper clip out. And here the results are a little bit varied. As you can see, rendering this project here took roughly 30 seconds longer using H.265 compared to H.264. Then again, I should definitely mention at this point that these results are highly sensitive to the type of hardware that you're using and more specifically, they're going to be hugely different if you have a CPU that has much less threads compared to the 13900K. For example, when I repeat the exact same test on my 7700K, you can see that I'm gaining roughly 60 to 70% speed improvements by going from H.264 to H.265. By the way, natively, it's not possible to play back HEVC videos in Windows. A workaround is to simply use the VLC media player, which then allows you to actually play back your HEVC video clips. However, if you're using DaVinci Resolve to edit your videos, you are likely still not going to be able to play back your videos as you will get this media offline warning. So to fix this, go to the Microsoft Store, search for the HEVC video extension, Pay the $1 that this costs and install the extension, after which you'll see that the video will play back just fine in DaVinci Resolve. Now, if so far you found any value whatsoever from this video, then I would highly appreciate it if you guys could smash that like and subscribe to the channel. Currently, only 5.5% of people that are watching my content are also subscribed. So if you're enjoying the super deep dive videos where I'm showing actual data to prove a point, then please consider subscribing. It would mean the absolute world to me if you could grow this community even further. But let's shift gears now and talk about the actual visual quality 
of the video after you've uploaded it to YouTube. So for this, I have performed a bunch of different render tests using H.264 and H.265 at various different resolutions and various different bit rates. I uploaded all of these videos onto YouTube, then re-downloaded them and analyzed them using VMAF or Video Multi-Method Assessment Fusion, which kind of combines different uh, quality metrics into just one number and is a very nice and convenient way to compare the quality of two different video sources. So on this graph, once again, the orange line represents rendering using H.264 and the blue line rendering using H.265. You can see the different rendering bit rates on the horizontal axis and the corresponding visual quality on the vertical axis with a higher value representing a better visual quality. As expected at 4K, H.265 always produces the higher visual quality when compared to H.264 rendered at the same bit rate. Now quite interestingly, you can achieve the exact same visual quality on YouTube with H.265 when decreasing your bit rate by 40 megabits per second. Of course, this relationship isn't completely linear and I'd have to kind of extend the graph both to the left and the right to give you this information for all different kinds of bit rates. But generally speaking, if you're rendering 4K videos for YouTube, you should definitely always stick to H.265 both for the better visual quality on YouTube and potentially lower render times depending on your system. Stepping down the resolution to 1440p, we can see pretty much the same behavior. By the way, if you look at these graphs and think that these could be very handy in order to figure out the best possible bitrate to render your YouTube videos at to get the highest possible uh, visual quality, then you would be just right. And that's actually something that I've covered in one of my past videos where I talked about the best bit rates depending on your resolution. You can check it out linked in the card right now. And I'm actually also working on updating that video with actually better data and that is actually using 4K footage natively in order to do my tests. So returning to this plot, we can see that once again, H.265 is far superior over H.264 at 1440p and will basically always result in higher visual quality on YouTube. Now, the gap between these two curves slightly decreased compared to 4K. We can see that the visual quality of a 70 megabits render at H.264 is roughly equivalent to a 45 megabits render at H.265. So roughly speaking, you can decrease your bit rate by 25 megabits and still have the same visual quality as you had with the higher bit rate in H.264. However, generally speaking, I would always recommend to increase your bitrate as far as possible in order to be able to make use of the much better looking video quality on YouTube when rendering at an even higher bitrate. Finally, let's decrease our resolution once again to 1080p. And here the results look completely different. I was actually getting this graph and was very confused. So H.265 was far, far worse than H.264 by a pretty significant margin actually. So I was a bit skeptical and therefore decided to re-record a one minute segment in Warzone 2 once again at 1080p, rendered it at different bit rates in H.264 and H.265, uploaded it to YouTube, re-downloaded everything, analyzed it, and that's what happened. So once again, definitely not what I would have expected. So I re-rendered the H.265 once again, the exact same clip, uploaded it again, and then it looked like this. So essentially what I'm thinking happens is that the much more compressed H.265 video simply doesn't contain enough information to provide a good H.264 re-encode on YouTube. Also, this isn't just a random outcome of the VMAF computation, as when I visually compare the H.264 render to the H.265 render um, after downloading the clips from YouTube, you can see that the H.264 is actually vastly superior in terms of visual clarity compared to the H.265 render. Now, frankly, I find it a bit concerning that at 1080p, it seems to be a little bit random as to whether you're getting good or bad quality on YouTube when you upload your H.265 videos in 1080p. So with having said all of this, my conclusion would be that if you have to render your videos in 1080p, then I would actually not recommend to use H.265 and use H.264 instead. However, instead of actually uploading 1080p footage, you should really consider to upscale your footage to 1440p and render it in that resolution um, in order to make sure that you can actually make use of the VP9 codec on YouTube. 
Now I'll make sure to include the visual quality that you can expect when upscaling a 1080p clip to 1440p or even 4K in this video, where I'll talk about the best possible bitrate to use when rendering videos for YouTube in different resolutions. So I hope you got value from this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.